Well, good morning, little masters, and welcome back to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast, and let's get week 16 started with Mailbag Monday. So Paulina J. writes in from Poland asking, what does it mean that Kirdan lives in his third cycle and looks actually a little old with a beard and gray hair? I'm feeling called out. That's a great question, Paulina. Thanks for sending it in. Let's start as we often do by looking at the texts to get specific. First, let's go to the Grey Havens at the end of The Lord of the Rings. As they came to the gates, Círdan the shipwright came forth to greet them. Very tall he was, and his beard was long, and he was gray and old, save that his eyes were keen as stars. And he looked at them and bowed and said, All is now ready. Okay, so he has a long beard here, and he was both gray and old, though at least his eyes were still sharp. Now, we read a little bit more about him in The Lord of the Rings and in The Silmarillion, but this is the only passage in those books that mentions his appearance of age, his beard, and so on. And then there are a ton of references to Círdan throughout Unfinished Tales. The Tale of Tuor, the Narn, Aldarion and Arendis, the history of Galadriel and Celeborn, the Istari, and even both the disaster of the Gladden Fields and the Palantiri see his name. But nothing more about his appearance, his physical appearance, shows up in those places. Now, if we dive into the History of Middle-Earth, Volume 12, that's the Peoples of Middle-Earth, and we go to the last writings, we read that his original name among the Teleri, to whom he belonged, is never used. But a footnote to that passage reads, Pengaloth alone mentions a tradition among the Sindar of Doriath that it was in archaic form, no way, the original meaning of which was uncertain. Well, whatever his name may have been, that text also gives us a very important clue about his age. We read, It was during the long waiting of the Teleri for the return of the floating isle, upon which the Vanyar and Noldor had been transported over the great sea, that Círdan had turned his thoughts and skill to the making of ships, for he and all the other Teleri became impatient. Nonetheless, it is said that for love of his kin and allegiance, Círdan was the leader of those who sought longest for Elwë when he was lost and did not come to the shores to depart from Middle-earth. Thus he forfeited the fulfillment of his greatest desire to see the blessed realm and find again there Olwë and his own nearest kin. Now the elves' great march toward Amman began in 1105 of the Years of the Trees, and it was only in Years of the Trees 1050 that the elves awakened in the first place. So while we're not told explicitly that Círdan is one of the unbegotten, one of the original 144 elves awakened at Kui Vienen. He is still really, really, really old. And yes, according to a piece called From the Shibboleth of Feanor, which is in Vinyar Tengwar number 41, we learn that by this point he is in his third cycle of life. Tolkien writes specifically that elves did not have beards until they entered their third cycle of life. But what does that mean? What is this cycle of life thing? So for that, let's turn to The Nature of Middle-Earth, edited by Carl F. Hostetter. In chapter 19, that's Elvish Life Cycles, we read about two different texts clipped together by Tolkien dated around 1969. First, we read that he says, The Elvish lives should go in cycles. They achieved longevity by a series of renewals. After birth and coming to maturity and beginning to show age, they began a period of quiet in which, when possible, they retired for a while and issued from it renewed again in physical health to approximately the vigor of early maturity. Their knowledge and wisdom were, however, progressively cumulative. This had not appeared in the periods dealt with, or had only begun towards the end of the Third Age. The fading was apparent in this way. The periods of activity and full vigor became progressively shorter, and the renewal was not so complete. They were a little older at each renewal than at the previous renewal. That is interesting. I love the nature of Middle-earth for stuff like this, for these really special little details. It's like, oh, that is so interesting. Like maybe I just need to take a couple months off and I can come back with the physical vigor of a, yeah, it doesn't work for us. Now, Tolkien added later, elves lived in life cycles, birth, childhood to bodily and mental maturity, and then a period of parenthood, marriage, etc., which could be delayed for a long time after maturity. This cycle proceeded until all children of the first period of parenthood were grown up. Then there was a youth renewing. Well, of course, Círdan never wed or had children, so it's a mystery as to when he moved into his second life cycle, let alone the third. So what does it mean that he lives in his third life cycle, has a long beard, and looks old? Well, it means he's old. He's well and truly old. I mean, he's seriously the oldest elf around at this point. 
It also means he's seen a lot in his long years on Middle Earth. It should be noted, though, that Círdan isn't the only elf named in the Legendarium who has a beard. Matan, the father of Nerdanel, the woman who married Feanor and bore him seven sons, he was only in his second life cycle. In fact, early in his second, when he is said to have grown a beard, something Tolkien describes as exceptional since he was only early in his second life cycle. But you might say that he and Círdan are the exception that proves the rule, no beards for elves. Now, folks, that wraps it up for Mailbag Monday, not just this week, but for Series 2 of today's Tolkien Times. Now, if you have a question you'd like me to answer in Series 3 or later, please email it to barlaman at theprancingponypodcast.com. Let them know it's for today's Tolkien Times, and I'll get to it as soon as possible. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free feed, a monthly hangout with me, a bonus weekly episode, and a lot more. And finally, join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times for Tolkien Tuesday as we learn more about the professor himself. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Please follow or subscribe in your podcast apps and follow at Tolkien Times on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>